New at 5, Channel 2 Action News investigates the recycling of plastic bags. We launched a joint investigation with ABC News. Now, two big box retailers have been dropped from the recycling directory. Plenty of people make the effort to drop bags into bins, but is it really paying off? Channel 2 investigative reporter Sophia Choi tracked trash and put it to the test. We teamed up with ABC News and affiliates across the country and put tracking devices like this one into plastic bags like this. Now, after tightly securing them, we dropped them off at various local stores with recycling programs. We tracked the air tags for months online. Not all of them ended up at recycling centers. Well, that's bad. That's bad. That's really upsetting. We met Dolores Wiggins recycling her trash here at CHARM, or the Center for Hard to Recycle Materials in Southeast Atlanta. She, along with others here, take it seriously. That concerns me a great deal. Yeah, I mean, major corporations like that taking shortcuts on recycling? I'm doing my part, why aren't you doing yours? Peggy Whitlow Ratcliffe is the founder of CHARM, where they collect 30,000 plastic bags a week. And they come here with the comfort knowing that it's going to be recycled. She believes big box companies using these recycling bins are trying to do the right thing. Unfortunately, a lot of wish cycling happens. I think it's the best of intentions. But she says film plastic bags like these are really hard to recycle because not many places actually do it. Here at Charm, the collected bags end up here. But a vast majority you can see here is film. And that's at really Nexus Circular in really Southwest really Atlanta, one of only a handful of companies in the U.S. recycling plastic bags. Mechanical recyclers can't effectively process film plastic. Jeffrey Gold founded this advanced recycling center that turns these bags into this oil. This is fresh oil. It doesn't get any fresher than this. After sorting and shredding the plastic, a reactor melts it. The resulting oil is then stored in these tankers and sold. We pump it into the whole big tanker truck and off it goes and it gets brought to the facility with Shell or Chevron Phillips. But Gold says few companies do it due to setup costs. He says that's why so many plastic bags end up in the landfill where it could take hundreds of years to disintegrate. Of our six trackers, three from Walmart and Target stores ended up in landfills or transfer stations across North Georgia. While we don't know for sure the tracker stayed with the bags, we made sure to tie them securely. In response to our results, a Target spokesperson said, last year we recycled nearly 24 million pounds of plastic bags and plastic film materials from our in-store recycling bins, and we're committed to looking at our processes to improve our recycling efforts. Walmart told us it has helped remove over 2 billion single-use bags from circulation and are working to continue shifting to more sustainable choices. Publix, where the trackers actually pinged at recycling centers, says it's no surprise their program worked. Our processes are such that it works and everything ends up where it's supposed to to be able to be recycled. Back at Charm, we found recyclers disappointed but encouraged that big box companies are at least moving in a cleaner direction. I think if some percentage of them still are recycled, it's better than nothing. ABC News worked with Channel 2 Action News and eight other stations. The overall results echoed our own 23 out of 46 trackers last pinged at landfills like this one or at incinerators. Three of them ended up overseas, one of them in Indonesia, a country known for heavily contributing to plastics in the ocean. After learning about the investigation, the research company that manages the online drop-off directory told us they removed all Walmarts and Targets from their list until they can confirm that their store drop-off film and bag materials are being recycled rather than landfilled or incinerated. Back to you.